Okay, we're going to talk about isomers of alkanes. And isomers is just a word that describes molecules that have the same number of carbons, the same number of hydrogens, with the same number of atoms, and the same types of atoms. Um, but those atoms are connected in different ways. And today we're going to talk about a particular type of isomer called a constitutional isomer. And we're going to focus on alkanes, the constitutional isomers of alkanes. Now, you know, really simple alkanes like methane or propane, things with few carbons, there's really no choices about how to connect those carbons together. But as soon as you get to four carbons and you think about butane, you could imagine connecting those carbons in different ways. And really there are two different ways to connect the carbons when you have four of them together. One of them is just in a linear fashion, and the other one is where you add sort of a branch in the middle. Now, these are the two constitutional isomers of butane, and if you count the number of carbons and hydrogens in them, you'll see that they both have the same number and the same type. They're just connected in different ways, and so they are isomers of each other, and these we call constitutional isomers of each other. Now, constitutional isomers might have different properties associated with them, and we definitely name them differently because uh, they might, uh, that the different properties might be useful to us. So, this is the most common way of drawing butane, and we call that the normal or N butane, where it's just linear. If you have a branch in the middle, we have to name that differently. Uh, we could imagine naming it just like we name any other alkane. This is a one, two, three. My longest carbon chain is uh, propane, and it's got a methyl group at the second position. This is a two methyl propane. Or we often have common names for some of these constitutional isomers. Um, this is also isobutane. Okay. Now, these are the only two ways to connect um, four carbons together. So we only have really two choices or two constitutional isomers for butane. But as soon as you add more carbons, things get complicated really quick. Here's our normal pentane. Let's try to think of different ways to connect this pentane together. Um, let's add a branch to it, right? What if we do I have four carbons here and add the fifth one as a branch? This, we can imagine, we could call this 2-methyl-butane. Um, is there another thing we could do? Well, let's branch it even more. We have one, two, three, four, five carbons. This would be a 2, 2 dimethyl propane. These are the three constitutional isomers of pentane, right? And if you counted the carbons and counted the hydrogens, you would see that they all have the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens. We've just connected them differently. Now, sometimes it get, can get confusing when you start adding branches to figure out whether you've um, determined another constitutional isomer or you're just representing one that is already there in a different way. Let me give you an example of, of that. So um, let's try to figure out how to do this. Let's see. Here, I've got five carbons in this molecule. And the question is, is this a new constitutional isomer, or is it something different? Um, or is it some something that we've already put up here? Okay, one thing I'm going to talk about now is, is to try to figure out what types of carbons are present in these different alkanes that we've drawn here. And by sort of determining what types of carbons in there, we can get a little bit of information about whether a particular branching pattern is unique or whether it's something we've already written down. And so we're going to start labeling carbons as either primary carbons, secondary carbons, or tertiary, or quaternary carbons. Okay, 
this nomenclature is going to be very useful as we go into organic chemistry because we're going to be able to describe different carbons in our skeleton um, based on um, how many other carbons they're bound to. And so if I have a carbon that's only bound to one other carbon, that's called a primary carbon. If that carbon's bound to two other carbons, it's a secondary, tertiary, quaternary, so on and so forth. So let's look at our normal pentane and start labeling these carbons as primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. Here's a terminal carbon. It's only bound to one other carbon, so it's a primary carbon. And the same goes for the other terminal carbon. These two carbons, or three carbons in the middle, each of them are bound to two other carbons. So this carbon is bound to this carbon and to that carbon. It's bound to two carbons, makes it ter or secondary. The same with this central carbon and the same with this one. So if we look at this constitutional isomer of n-pentane, it's got two primary carbons or yeah, and three secondary carbons. Here's another constitutional isomer. If we start labeling the carbons, we'll find out that it has a different pattern of the types of carbons. And not only that, it has a tertiary carbon in the middle. This carbon is bound to one, two, three other carbons. Let's look at this one. Well, look at that. We've got primaries all on the outside. They're all bound to that central carbon. That central carbon is actually a quaternary carbon which is bound to the other four. So by noticing that these have different patterns of primary, secondary, tertiary carbons, uh, we can identify them as different constitutional isomers. Now let's look at this one down here, this new one that we wrote, and see if it matches any of these patterns or if it has its own unique one, which would make it a, a fourth constitutional isomer. Primary, 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 secondary, tertiary. This is definitely not the same as that. It's definitely not the same as that one. But here you can see that this pattern is the same between these two alkane branched molecules. And really, if we just turned this molecule maybe a little counterclockwise, it would look a lot like the 2-methylbutane that we have here. And in fact, if we were to name it, we would also name it 2-methylbutane, which suggests this is not a new constitutional isomer. It's just a different way of drawing this existing one. So this is important, the primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary nomenclature of carbons in an alkane chain.